And now, America's number one reality radio show for men. Live from Los Angeles, it's Spencer Cobrin's The Bald Truth. Let's do it. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hello? Yes. Hello. How you doing? Dr. John Cole. Dr. John yeah, Cole. We're good. How are you? How are you, man? Oh, doing great. It's been a while since I've chatted with you guys. It's great to have you on the yeah. show, man. You are yeah. Yeah. probably one of the guys that have uh, brought a lot of attention to exosomes, uh, especially online, just to let you know. Uh, I have been, I was uh, contacted by another IHS member asking me my thoughts on exosomes because of what he saw you putting out there online. Uh -huh. So there's a tremendous amount of interest. Even though you guys, not all of you guys are communicating, the internet uh -huh. is bringing it all out there. And then again, that's another worry of mine because, okay, this guy yeah. happens to be an IHS member. What about all the other guys who are looking at your stuff and hearing this broadcast who are going to jump on this next week. Exactly. But, you know, here, here, here's the big risk with this. Um, there are a lot of players in this space. So you have different companies that make claims about their exosomes and the concentration of the exosomes and the quality of the exosomes. And the exosomes tend to be somewhat self-specific. Um, so if you have one company that says, okay, we have uh, uh, five, 50 million exosomes per cc, uh, they may not. And so, you know, when we talk about the PRP space being uh, uh, difficult to navigate, it's because there's so many different manufacturers and there are so many different ways to process the PRP. Uh, so right. exosomes can go the same way, um, you know, Dr. Cooley's working with uh, Direct Biologic, which is, I think, a very good company. Um, they make an off-label claim of up to 100 million exosomes per cc, but they tend to st stand behind it. Um, and then it's a question of uh, the source of the exosome. You know, a fetal exosome is going to be more pluripotent than something that's more differentiated. And, and that's what's pretty exciting about the exosome is that you know, if you, you, you've got inside these little micro vesicles, they're so tiny, you know, much much smaller than a growth factor, which could be, you know, seven to eight kilodaltons in weight. These things are, you know, uh, you know, somewhere between 30 and, and uh, uh, 200, maybe even 1,000 nanometers in size. They're very tiny. And each one of these little micro vesicles can have a whole bunch of, uh, little tiny vesicles inside, and, and they deliver growth factors and chemokines, and uh, they upregulate protein synthesis. They can stimulate stem cells. And so, you know, if you get these fetal exosomes and you put them in with, you know, our, our, follic our, our hair follicle stem cells are getting old, you know, so you just got old follicles on top of your head, and they just get older and older, and eventually they they go away, and hair loss is nothing but accelerated aging. So, if you can get some of these uh, uh, fetal exosomes in there to, to, to get these stem cells going, then, um, you know, it's pretty exciting. Now, now but, how, how are the fetal exosomes derived? Is it through umbilical cords? Is it through... Uh, well, uh, no, it's, a, it's, it's a amniotic fluid. Amniotic. So they get the amniotic fluid, and then there's a way you process it down. There's gel plates and whatnot, and you get the, the uh, micro vesicles out of that. So that, that's that's pretty interesting, but the exact cocktail we don't know. Uh, we don't know how many cc's. We don't know how much to dilute it to. It's got some serious advantages over PRP. Um, you know, I've got my own uh, studies going, looking at PRP, amniotic membrane, uh, adipocyte stem cells, and exosomes. I, I still don't have the adipocyte and uh, exosome data, but the amniotic membrane outperforms PRP, even platelet lysate, which when Dr. Cooley was talking, he was talking about, you know, get all the bad stuff out. Well, you lyse platelets, then you spin off all the bad stuff. Now you got pure growth factors, but amniotic membrane is, is superior. Uh, so here's what it's going to boil down to, I think, is that uh, if you look at PRP, and amniotic membrane, and adipocyte stem cells. Probably the key ingredient in every one of these is the exosome. 
And so the, the overall objective is to try to get it down to a single product. Now, this product has another major advantage over uh, uh, PRP. Is if you ever had that injected in your scalp, it, it hurts. You know, yes, it does. Face, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, it's, it's primarily because you put an anticoagulant in there, and the anticoagulant yeah. is, is acidic. So with the exosomes, one of the things we've been able to do is just inject it and kind of move fast. And uh, sometimes we use a mesoderm, but we, a lot of times we don't even have to numb the patient up. It doesn't, it doesn't sting when it goes in. They just feel a little prick with the needle. Uh, exact depth is going to be a question. You know, there's a permanent part of the follicle that stays about two millimeters deep. And we know that secondary germ is very nearby. And, uh, and so are we going to be two, three millimeters deep? Or are we going to want to be four millimeters deep? Or are we going to hit, want to hit a layer, you know, four to two, something like that. So there's right. a lot of unknowns, but I tell you something, there's, there's no question. Um, I don't like to, to do before and afters. I like things I can measure. It's like you can look at two people run and you go, oh, that guy looks like he's fast. But you put him on, uh, you put him on a clock and you know if he's faster than the other guy. You know, you yeah, know sure. if he ran under two hours in a marathon because uh, you got a clock on him. So I like to measure hair mass or hair density. And so before and after, uh, you can vary the lighting. Uh, you can vary the angle. And you can make a guy look like he's got more hair or less hair. You can wet it, make it look like he's thinner. Uh, I mean, but if you I, can measure you could take a, You could take a picture you. 10 seconds apart, and it could look like a before and after picture. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Done it. But if you measure it, if you've got objective data, and that's what we're getting, objective data. And we've got women that are going up you know, increasing by, you know, 20, 30% in their hair mass in a matter of months. So, and of course, we measure that pretty close to the, uh, to the root. But uh, so we know that their hair's either getting thicker or they're getting more numbers. And uh, so it, it, we're getting measurable results. And it, it really, really kind of kicks in around the transplant. So when you combine it with the transplant, it's really exciting. I personally like to mix them with adipocyte stem cells. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff in the regenerative space right now, and so I'm glad do to you see, see you guys. Do you see wounding being, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Do you see wound heal or uh, wounding to be um, some sort of catalyst to kick this in as well, like with microneedling? Well, that's a, right, that's a great question. Uh, so when you microneedle, you know, you, how deep are you getting? You know, right. you're getting two millimeters. You're getting. Uh, see, uh, see, we got we millimeters. got another variable there, right? Half a mil, two mil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, by, by stimulating, stirring the space up, you know, the, the overall objective is to get those, those growth factors and, and uh, uh, protein upregulators. Because what the exosome does, it actually goes into the cell and it tells the cell to make proteins. So right. it, it can make growth factors and it upregulates through the messenger RNA. Um, yeah, it, so, it's, it's doing that naturally on its own. That, that's one of its its primary functions that we understand so far is, uh, among other things, is uh, wound healing. So I, I, to me, it makes sense that microneedling would would really help to kind of kick that process in. Well, I know some people are real big on microneedling. Needling. I know Dan McGrath is. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think Jerry is too. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't get as excited about it when all we had was the roller because it would the hair would get caught in it and just sort of rip hair out of the guy's head. But now that we got the MD pens, it's a pretty cool thing to do. It's a great animal. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. You know, I think that I, I know for a fact we put it in. We can put it in without any stimulation, and it it improves the quality of the hair. Uh, but again, if you, you know, Dr. Cooley alluded to this, if you've got somebody that's, you know, already lost the hair, you, nothing's going to bring that hair back. So the, the only place you can really put it is in the perimeter. Uh, right. And so I like to add it in people that have had hair transplants. You know, when I started, they said it was permanent. It's not permanent. That stuff no. goes down. Well, I, know, first of all, I, I love the I love the fact that you're you're willing to say that on the air because mm -hmm. it's something that we've been I, and I've been talking about since the beginning of my career. And just to just to be clear, it I mean, from what I remember uh, for ten minutes ago or whatever, whenever whenever we were speaking to Dr. Cooley, he seemed to imply that it was 
possible to regrow some hair on guys who uh, were significantly bald already. And he, well, that's what Dan McGrath's doing. Right. And, you know, he's got some before and afters that are interesting. You know, to me, they don't drop my, drop, drop my jaw. Right. But uh, uh, they are very interesting because these guys are, have more advanced hair loss and they're growing hair in areas where um, they didn't have much hair. Right. And it just means that you're catching those hair follicles while they're still, while they still have all the necessary stem cells. You right. know, the whole process is when you lose, you've got an epithelial stem cell and you've got a mesodermal stem cell. And it's just like two people having a cell phone. You know, you got one calls the other and says, meet me for dinner. Well, if that person's battery is dead and you call them for dinner, you know, you're, you're not going to have dinner together unless you just <laughs> happen to show up at the same place at the same time. So, you know, it, it's just a lack of communication. You lose a stem cell line. And there's nothing that's going to bring that back. The only thing that could possibly get it back is if we can somehow get stem cells to repopulate that area. And now we've got that communication again. So it's like recharging the guy's battery. That was actually a great analogy. And I think that um, I'm I'm glad that you called in because, again, speaking about Dan McGrath's um, patients, the way Dr. Cooley um, expressed his reaction to seeing Dr. McGrath's patients, it was extremely exciting. I think it's always, always important to kind of temper that excitement. Of course. And to, to not give anybody any false hope. Yeah, and I think he said, he, Dr. Cooley said it very well, that, you know, the best, the best responders, or, or maybe it was Joe, the best responders are the people that, that still have hair. You know, so the sooner you catch them, the better. And, 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 you know, I always tell people, look, don't start on anti-aging medicine when you're 89 and expect to look like you're 50 when you're 90. Yeah. You know, you better start in your 20s, and by the time you're 70, hopefully you look 50. Well, I have, I have to be honest, and everyone disagreed with me back in the day, and I think, I think you may or may not agree with me now, but, you know, to me, Proscar or Propecia was really one of the first anti-aging medications that was used on, on, a, on a broad scale. You know? Oh, yeah, no question. It's a beta cannon, beta, beta cannon conical pathway went up regulator through the DH, DHT pathway. And uh, it's an anti-aging medicine, period. So, I mean, and may, maybe it is doing some good for people who have been on it for long term, on, you know, besides just uh, with, with their hair loss. Well, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, wherever DHT ages you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's working for me. I don't know. But uh, listen, uh, Dr. Cole, I, I appreciate the call. I mean, is there anything else you want to add yeah. for guys out there who are now going to be ultra excited about this treatment? I just, you know, know, know the source. Because uh, I, I guarantee you what's going to happen is the same thing with PRP. You got guys that take a red top tube, which is what you use to draw blood. And they spin it down and draw off two cc's of serum and call it call what's left PRP, you know. And it costs them maybe a quarter to make. And then there are other there are other machines that cost in the thousands. My setup is probably about forty five thousand, mm-hmm. which is why not many people have it. But um, the um, you know y- you know there are going to be less expensive sources of exosomes, so you got to know your product. Expect the vultures to enter the space as soon as the word gets out. And some people may be even injecting, uh, um, you know, serum and calling it exosomes because PRP has exosomes in it, believe it or not. Yeah. Well, te- well, so technically they won't be lying when they go to Turkey to get a $1,500 hair transplant with exosomes included. Exosomes. Exactly. <laughs> and hotel. That, that is probably – And, and, I, and I hotel. Bet the exosome is, is, is doing all the lifting. Yeah. Well, well, it, it actually yeah. makes sense because because if you're if you're getting a more concentrated, you know, if if through a PRP treatment you're having to filter through everything to get to those exosomes, then yeah. just uh, skipping the middleman and going straight for exosome treatment itself, that yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So yeah, um, it's great. Yeah, because exosome has growth factors. factors. That's yeah. what you're after in the PRP growth factors. Exosomes carry growth factors. They stimulate cells to make growth factors. Exactly. They upregulate stem cells. You know, it's it's just constant, super concentrated, top of the line, uh, end of the road treatment. 
This, this is as good as it gets thus far. There's a lot we don't know. There's going to be cell specific. There are going to be modulators in there that will probably enhance and bring out the best parts of the exosome and be the most inductive to the uh, hair follicle. Um, you know, there's some studies on site stem cells that just look at if this person has this concentration of this protein, he's going to have a better response than this other guy. And, and stromal vascular fraction is superior to microfat and nanofat. So <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of, a lot of room to grow in this space. Well, you know, it's also exciting besides, and like you said, there's a lot of room to grow in this space. There are always people out there who are, you know, um, since the beginning of my career, and Joe gets the same thing, uh, they think in their minds that we somehow are trying to hold back possible treatments or uh, when it came to hair transplant surgery that, you know, I wanted to hold on to certain techniques, you know, because that's the only way that I would make a living. The greatest thing about what we do if I wanted to continue to make a living in this field is as things get better, more bad people enter the field and start selling bullshit around yeah. the good treatments. So we're always yeah. going to be needed. Yeah. You're not, <laughs> you're not going out of business. Yeah. That's what I try to tell these guys. I'm like, listen, it doesn't yeah. make a difference. The better things get, if there was a cure for hair loss tomorrow, 80% of oh, you guys man. would try to, get it, to try to get it done cheaply. And we're yeah. still going to have to be out here doing what we do. I'm just waiting for the bro science videos to come out on YouTube with these, these jerk offs <laughs> telling people how to do exosome treatments from home. Oh, they will, and they will. And I can, I can tell you that um, if, if you remember, and Joe, Joe remembers this, uh, the first time SMP was ever mentioned in this right here. sphere, in the world, was right here on the Ball Truth, and within a week, there Everybody. was a doctor from, I'm not going to say where, uh, one guy from this country, another guy from another country, mm. flying to Italy to... I'll uh, say it. Yeah, go ahead. Eastern Canada. Eastern Canada. Yeah. Flying to Did Italy uh, to, 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 to get trained. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I have still oh, never gotten a thank you note from Elena Lardi. For completely changing her life. Yeah. But but didn't yeah. she give you a big fat kiss on the cheek in Vegas? Wasn't that enough? No. A, a kiss on the well, cheek you got, from Melania. You, go you, go, you go out with George, I promise you he's going to take you to a great seafood restaurant. He's oh, a master. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I, we, we can't communicate. I'm going to have to get those, um, uh, eventually yeah. they're going to have those Google um, uh, headsets where you're going to be able to speak other languages. That's exciting. Oh, my God. Yeah. Tell me about that. That would be great. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, listen, listen, guys, guys who are listening, this is important information. Uh, we are not at the Holy Grail stage yet, but it is great to know that we are getting closer and closer to uh, potentially being able to help more people dealing with androgenetic alopecia in a, uh, a less invasive way and in a more standardized fashion than ever before. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a step in the right direction. But we're not at the end of the road. We're not at the end of the tunnel. You know, this is not going to regrow a full thick head of hair on everybody. There are going to be some people respond better than others, like anything. Like anything else. Okay. All right, Dr. Cole, thank you so much Temper for the call. Temper action with wisdom, gentlemen. That's right. We That's well That's said. <laughs> well said, Doc. Take care. <laughs> I'll be good. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye.